Hello everyone, happy Sunday. It's Palm Sunday. Uh, and so I'm actually going to be talking about that uh, today. Uh, the use of scripture just to reference uh, just Palm Sunday uh, and when Jesus came riding in on the donkey before, a week before crucifixion. So we are just a week away from Easter, Resurrection Sunday. I prefer to call it Resurrection Sunday, but some people call it Easter, which is okay. And uh, next Sunday, I'll have to do something a little special about that now that I'm thinking about that. But welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that everyone's weekend is going well. I hope that the past week has been good for you um, also. And so we're going to go ahead and just jump right into the topic. So uh, the title of this video is When the King Shows Up. And so I'm going to be referencing again just Palm Sunday or what we celebrate now um, as Palm Sunday, which back then was actually just the week of Passover. And so you do um, see that this is a time that Jewish people um, are celebrating the Passover. But we're going to talk about just the unusual things that you can expect when Jesus shows up in your own life, in your own situation. So um, I'm going to pull up here. We're going to read just one scripture uh, with John 12 and 12. And um, this is, again, when Jesus is riding in on a donkey. So give me one moment while that is coming up. If you have any questions or, you know, comments about, you know, the topic today, you can put those in. And if you have a question just about the Bible or faith just in general, you can drop those right in the chat. It doesn't have to be related to this specific topic. And I'll answer your um, your faith or biblical questions um, right here in the chat. And it can even just be a life application issue as well. Just how do we apply the Bible in this particular um, circumstance? So if you have that, you can drop those in the chat. And I make sure that I will get to those at the end before we actually end today. Uh, so hello, shout out to everybody who's watching live. Thank you for being here. Hope that your day is going well. Okay, so let's go to John um, 12 and 12. So it says, on the next day, um, much people were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. And then verse 13 says, and they took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. Again, um, 12 and 13, uh, John 12 Chapter 12, verses 12 and 13 says, And on the next day, much people were come to the feast. And when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches off palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. So in this situation, first of all, you have prior to this moment um, for the past three years, Jesus has been walking throughout, you know, the area and doing miracles and he's been teaching. And during this time period, the religious leaders of the time, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were not happy with Jesus because of the fact that you had people who were so like enthralled by what they were doing and he was attracting these large crowds. And so they actually saw him as a threat, one, because um, they thought that he was going, that Jesus was going to try to build his own kingdom and try to go against the leaders and the kingdom and the government at the time. But that's not what Jesus was coming um, to do, at least just in that sense. There was a greater purpose of the uh, for Jesus actually coming to earth to redeem mankind and to redeem the whole world. But they were really intimidated by him. And so, uh, oh, you guys, my... <laughs> This is really bad. My phone is about to die. Give me one second while I go and grab my charger so that my phone does not die in the middle of this broadcast.
All right, I am back. Please excuse that. That is a first. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and keep um, rocking out. Um, so again, just they were really intimidated by the fact that Jesus was drawing these large crowds. Um, they thought that he was just coming just to overthrow the government. And again, as I stated um, just a few moments ago, is that the purpose of Jesus actually being here on earth was so much bigger than just the local government at that time. Again, it was about redeeming the entire world. And so with this um, point where we're seeing Jesus, he comes riding in on a donkey, right? And as he's riding in on a donkey, the crowd that was gathered, they began to celebrate him. And so they began to say Hosanna and to praise him and to celebrate him and say that he is the King of Israel. And what's so ironic about this um, one and this is the first unusual thing that I want to point out um, is that when you think about what kings did at that time is that they would come in in um, a, a place or a position of grandeur right so they would have these wonderful elaborate chariots and they would have you know people from the army following them and they would have a huge crowd and so it would be a huge ordeal to see them coming in and so when you thought about a king they would be dressed in royal robes and very extravagant outfits and you didn't see jesus doing that jesus didn't come in with an extravagant outfit he didn't have this huge big chariot he just had a regular donkey that he was sitting on top of and riding through the town and so it didn't seem very kingly but at the end of the day this unusual uh circumstance that we see unfolding here is actually the precipice again to us seeing the manifestation of the redemption of mankind is that before um you know at the beginning before even the the creation the foundations of the world god already had a plan in place. He knew that humankind would fall. He knew that in Eden, Adam and Eve would eat the fruit from the forbidden tree. And so even from then, it's that God already had a plan to redeem mankind. And so at the time that Jesus is riding in on this donkey, it's an unusual circumstances that is going to lead to an unusual miracle taking place, an unusual um, viewing of God's power. When you look at even um, Jesus dying on the cross, and I won't get too deep into that today because we're going to talk about that next week um, on Resurrection Sunday is that this was something that was new. You had never seen prior to Jesus doing this, um, someone coming down on earth, a deity, God, the um, this part of the Godhead coming down in the form of the earthly body of coming to earth as a man uh, to now come and do miracles and do all the things that he did while he was on earth to then give up his life so that mankind would be saved. It's that Jesus is the only begotten son of God who came to redeem mankind and because of him giving up his life, now we all have life, right? So you never saw this happen before. And so this unusual uh, circumstances that we see with Jesus riding in on a donkey is really uh, a glimpse into what we're going to see even later on after the crucifixion, once the resurrection happens. And even now it applies to our life today is that the unusual power of Jesus Christ still resides within us. The Bible tells us that the same power that raise Jesus Christ up from the dead now lives within us and that it could raise us up as well. And so even in this unusual, unkingly manner, Jesus is still the king of the entire universe. And so I want to take a pause right there and to say that no matter what your circumstances are, even if it seems like the most unlikely place that a miracle or a blessing can be birthed out of, even if it seems like the most unlikely place for you to get exactly what you need, even if you're in the most dire situations and it seems like there's no way out, the unusual places are still perfect for God to do what you need him to do. Oh my goodness. Let me tell Okay, y'all, I'm about to get hyped. So when you look at even the miracles of Jesus, let's step out of the moment of Jesus even riding in on a donkey and I'm crawling Hosanna. Looking at the miracles that Jesus did, when you think about the man who was blind and Jesus spit in some mud and put that on his eyes, that was unusual. How can you use something dirty? How can you use something as nasty as spit? And that be the thing that now gives somebody vision that allows them to be able to see again. And so we see the unusual producing a miracle and giving sight to a man that was blind. Even when you look at 
even the feeding of the multitude. It was greater than 5,000. You have a little boy who surrendered his lunch and who said, hey, I have these two fish and five loaves of bread and the crowd in excess of 5,000 was, was fed. You have the unusual happening. A school lunch for a little boy is not supposed to be enough to feed the whole crowd. But in this unusual situation, you have God pray one prayer, one blessing. And because of that one blessing from God, you see now increase and abundance because it wasn't just enough to feed the crowd. It was enough even for them to have 12 basketfuls of food left over. And so again, going back to the story of Jesus walking in or riding in on the donkey in this unusual situation. And again, this leading up to an unusual redemption of mankind. You have people who are now praising and acknowledging God. And so now let's take another pause right here. And even though the Bible does not give a lot of um, specifics about the people in the crowd as far as their names and what they were going through, statistically thinking or looking at this crowd is that it's unlikely that this entire crowd that was coming and crying out Hosanna uh, had perfect lives. It's statistically unlikely that none of them um, didn't have any dire circumstances happening in their life, that they didn't have something that they needed to um, to happen in order for their life to improve or to, to be better. And so in spite of whatever they may have been going through, they still, one, acknowledge Jesus. And so no matter where you are in your circumstances, no matter how unusual, how uncomfortable it may be, you still want to acknowledge God because God is always with us. God is omnipresent. And so he's always there. He is accessible to us. He is there. He loves us. He is here with us even now in this very moment. And so they cried out and they said, Hosanna. And so, you know, I can imagine that there may have, and I actually said the same thing in our welcome um, for our church today. And I want to share it here with you all as well. Is that, you know, there may have been someone who was there dealing with the illness, right? But even in the midst of their illness and their sickness, they still cried out, Hosanna, the King of Israel. There may have been someone in the crowd who was dealing with rejection, but even in the midst of their rejection, they cried out, Hosanna, the King of Israel is here. There may have been someone who was dealing with some financial situations and the debtors may have been waiting at their door when they would return home and they knew that the debtors were on their way and even in the midst of that they took time and took a pause to still give glory and to give honor to God there may have been someone in that crowd who had strained relationships with people that they love whether it was their spouse or their family members or with friends but even in the midst of going through that strained relationship and experiencing the pain and the turmoil that comes from not being on the same page with someone that you love they still cried out Hosanna the king of Israel is here. And so it's an example to each of us today is no matter how unusual, how uncomfortable, how burdensome, how dire our situations need is that we still need to make sure that we take time to acknowledge one, that God is God, that God loves us, that God is powerful. And that no matter what we're going through, there is nothing that can exceed his power and his ability to move so mighty in our lives is that unusual circumstance has birthed unusual blessings. I'm going to say that one more time. Unusual circumstances birth unusual blessings. Unusual problems birth unusual miracles. Unusual uh, barriers and, and, and issues that we encounter God births unusual revelation for us to even have a greater understanding of who God is and the God that lives within us that equips us to walk in that same power and authority. The Bible says that greater is he that is within in us than he that is in the world. So the unusual situations is the precipice to the unusual blessing and miracles that we need to take place. And so don't give up in the midst of your unusual situation. Don't think that God has left in the middle of your unusual situation because really it's setting the stage for the king of glory to come in and all of who he is and where God is, there is liberty, there is freedom, there is healing. 
healing. There is fullness of joy. And so in the unusual times in your life, seek the God of the unusual and so that you can see the unusual continue to take place that works on your behalf because the Bible tells us that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So be encouraged, everyone. Don't lose hope. Keep the faith. Keep speaking the word of God over your life, over your family, over your business, over your health, over your finances, over your relationships, over everything that concerning you so that you can see it produce the wisdom and the power and the glory of God in every single aspect of your life. So that has been Sunday inspiration. I'm going to pull up the chat, see if we have any questions um, from anyone that was watching live. While I'm doing that, uh, I do want to go through and talk about the announcements um, for the group as far as who all comes live. Is that on Mondays, we have Monday Motivation with Michelle. On Tuesdays, we have Fitness Tuesday with Sasha, who is here in the group. On Wednesday, Sharia comes in with Wellness Wednesday. Sharia and I then go live together in a group on Thursday afternoons. Um, and we talk about emotional wellness topics as well. And also, hot topics is going on and how we can use those situations to even inform our own lives. Um, and then on Thursday evenings, we have Sasha or Tasha, who comes in the group with yoga. Fridays, we have Lisa, who's here with um, skincare and tips on how to take care of your skin and even makeup tips as well. And then Saturday for Small Business Saturday, Sheree and I post um, group, uh, videos to give you tips to be able to grow your business and expand your business. Um, and so make sure you check that out because once a month, we also go live as well. Um, but just to close off, just want to do a brief recap of what I talked about today. Is that again, is that with Jesus riding in on the donkey for now what we now celebrate as as Palm Sunday which was the Passover back in his time is that you saw him riding in on a donkey and the people were declaring him the king of Israel and typically in biblical times um, is that you saw kings who would ride in on these grandiose chariots and elaborate outfits and things and so that people would look and say that's a king and so even though Jesus didn't look kingly he was actually the king of the universe and him riding in on that donkey in the least unkingly way was setting up the stage for the most unusual blessing and miracle to take place is that with the crucifixion he didn't just die but he rose again and he took back the keys the king or the sting of death and the king's uh, keys to have access for us to have eternal life as well and so no matter what unusual circumstance you are in personally your unusual circumstance is the perfect situation for an unusual miracle and blessing to take place in your life because God is king and of the entire universe. There's no situation, no matter how dire it looks, no matter how bad it looks, there is nothing that happens in your life that is outside the confines of God that's still doing impossible. The Bible says that what is impossible with man is possible in God. And so that you want to expect, even in your unusual uh, what seems like dire circumstances, expect the unusual blessing, expect the unusual victory, expect unusual life to be produced in every aspect of your life. Because again, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. So that is a quick recap. If you want to watch the cool message for those of you who are coming on late, I will make sure that I post this in a self-care group so that you can watch the full message. But that is all that I have today. I will again, make sure that there's no questions that if one has any questions or anything before I head out, um, you can post those real quick. But other than that, you all take care. Have a very blessed day. Have an amazing week. And you can also feel free to drop questions and things in the chat. And I'll make sure that I'll watch the, the comment section here in the self-care group and also on my YouTube channel. For those of you who are watching this on my YouTube channel, drop it in the chat and I will come back and answer any questions that anyone has. All right, so take care. Have a very blessed day and I'll see you all soon. Bye.